Hi guys, um, on today's show, I have a, a guest with me. His name is Cedric Bertelli. Um, he is one of the founders of the Emotional Health Institute. Um, he's going to talk to us about trauma and how you, how you can um, heal some of that trauma. So let's bring him on and we'll get started. Hello, Cedric. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Donald. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. You're very good. I was I was really uh, intrigued that you re when you're uh, when you guys reached out to me and read up a little bit about you and and then we had that conversation and um, it is uh, is very intriguing. So um, about what you do. So why don't you uh, tell our listeners a little bit about you and then we can get into the work you do. Sure. So my name is Cedric Bertelli. Um, I was born in France. I'm, I do live in the U.S. I've been living here for about uh, 20 plus years. So more than half my life has my uh, accent uh, doesn't show, actually. <laughs> it's still very thick. I'm sorry about that. Um, well, the, the, my first career was in hospitality business. I used to work for the Ritz-Carlton Hotel Company. I was uh, oh. director of the restaurants for them. And my first job for them was at um, the Ritz in Half Moon Bay, California. That's how I came in the U.S. And since 2009, I completely shifted my career to focus on, um, or say, emotional well-being, and specifically how to understand how the brain constructs emotion, so we can, the most natural way, natural way possible, uh, I would say, deconstruct debilitating emotional pattern. And uh, okay. in 2000, uh, 2011, we uh, we founded the Emotional Health Institute uh, in the USA. Uh, in France, and uh, since 2023, we are now operating out of Japan as well. And uh, wow. with it, yeah, it, 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 has, it has been growing quite fast. And the, the reason why it's growing so fast is because what we're offering is, I think, is very um, um, pragmatic, very efficient, very natural. Uh, and um, through the Emotional Health Institute, we are teaching a body of work called Emotional Resolution or MRES that will, I think, um, to, to situate it a little bit is at the crossroad between the neuroscience of emotion and um, philosophy, specifically the philosophical work of Baruch Spinoza, uh, Epicure, Merleau-Ponty, uh, all these people that have been talking about emotions uh, for, for centuries. And uh, everything is, is there in the book, so to speak. And right now, blended with uh, neuroscience, you can really find a very uh, efficient and simple way to heal the wounds created by past trauma. Now you said you you came over working with the Ritz, and then you transitioned to. The, is there something that sparked you to follow this path, or? Yes. Well, first I was I was uh, always have been a very anxious person since I was a child. I was extremely anxious, a lot of self um, directed anger, um, and then working at the Ritz, I had the opportunity to have a, a, a large team to manage a lot of people and. I could see very quickly that you don't manage people, you manage their emotions. You have to yeah. understand people emotionally in order to allow them to thrive and to be happy to come to work and to do their, their work. And it became, uh, it became a, a, an interest of mine and see how past trauma, how, how I would say how most people emotions are not congruent with their reality. You know, right. most people emotional responses or reaction definitely come from past experiences and are not um, yeah, congruent with what's actually happening in their life right now. And so understanding why is that happening and, and how can we shift that? In 2009, what happened is the economy went down and uh, uh, things changed in the company. I, I wasn't in agreement with everything anymore. So it was a good sign for me to, uh, to stop. I was almost 30 years old back then to stop and to focus on some, something else. And went back yeah. to France and study what I'm doing now, and uh, came back with uh, with this um, this concept, this work. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially over the last few years, um, uh, there's so much of that going on. So much of the trauma, yeah. just from the way the world has been. And we were actually talking about it in one of my groups the other day, emotional trauma. So it, it came up again, and. I knew that I was getting ready to do this, so I'm like, "Oh, this is going to be this is going to be interesting." So I'm I'm anxious to share that with with the listeners and um, 
and and see uh right. see how they see how they resonate so uh that's cool okay so if someone calls you what would be like your uh, how would you start to to discuss this with them i guess would be the the question yeah so when people call um i uh, i usually ask them what can i do to help you right what what is cool. it uh, i i have nothing to sell um what is it how can I help you? And uh, the question right. is, if we could shift anything within you during this conversation, that's it, then everything is possible. Let's say we can shift one thing within you during this conversation, what would that be? And, mm. and it is key for the person to, to have an idea what they want to shift in them. So beyond, sure. beyond uh, um, family trauma, family story, beyond uh, pointing fingers or finding excuses, in me, what is it in me that I sense that is toxifying my life, that blocks me, that uh, do not allow me to move on uh, to certain things. So I'm talking about anxiety, anger, frustration, resentment, depression, uh, PTSD. People come to see me for fear in general, for all those, mm. all those elements. And yeah. So, so not so much, like you said, not so much finger pointing, what did they do to me, right. but what can I change in order to just be happier, basically? That's right. I often tell my clients, I cannot do anything about your father or your mother or your wife or your children. No, no. The only thing you can change is you. That's why we're here. So regardless of what's happening in your life, what is happening in you? What, yeah. is, what is making your life difficult? Yeah. Right. It's it, that, once we take response, sorry, when we take responsibility okay. for our own stuff, it, it then we we stop being puppets from the environment. Right. I mean that's so important because I've learned on this journey that, um, and I've told so many people in the groups and and that I've talked to here that you can't change anything else besides you. You know, uh, maybe. Maybe they things didn't happen as as they say they did, but the only thing you can do is work on use. We've all have we all have something. Yeah. We all have something we can change, That's right. and that might be the one thing that turns a light bulb and you know makes a different relationship possible. So absolutely, it's interesting. And to go back to something you said earlier, you know, people talk about trauma healing often. And trauma healing is a good concept. Uh, 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 tons of books are being sold about, sold about trauma healing. But I think that right. trauma healing is just impossible. Because trauma, uh, I know what your show is all about. Uh, and I know yeah. you guys are going through tremendous trauma in your experiences. But, but uh, trauma happened. There's nothing we can do about that. Trauma happened. Trauma cannot be healed. If I was sexually abused, if somebody from my family left, it, trauma happened, it cannot be healed. The only thing that can be quote unquote healed all the wounds that this trauma created. Mm. So in my work, we never talk about the trauma or very, very rarely or very little. I don't want to know what your trauma was almost. No, no, tell me what's happening today. What, right. what, what are the repercussions? What are the impacts of this trauma in your life today? This, this we can resolve. Gotcha. So not so much the trauma, but what the what caused, or well, not what caused, but what the repercussions were from that trauma. That's correct. Got that. Okay. Because, you know, I've been doing that for a long time now, and I never had a client that can remember a trauma and that only has one repercussion. I mean, every time there is, you know, every time there is a trauma, there's several emotions that come up in life. You know, you lose trust, right. your self self-worth, self self et etc. Cetera, et cetera. So talking about this one event, yeah, okay. Sometimes people have to be heard, and that's not my job. My job is okay. Right. Pragmatically today, what can we do so you can so you can be better in your life? Wow, it's 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 interesting too because my my wife and I and some friends were just talking about this today. As a matter, of, they were talking about it, and then her and I talked about it this afternoon, um, trying to remember some trauma that's happened to us in the past and how to how to how to deal with that now so it's almost the same thing it's really kind of freaky yeah. that that is coming up knowing that we were going to have this conversation so yeah. so that's really cool there's no coincidences right. huh? uh for sure yeah. for sure uh, matter of fact my wife told me 
today. Uh, she, she mentioned that her and her friends get together and they talk about spiritual things and whatever. And, and uh, that's one of the things that they talked about recently was trauma and, you know, letting go of that trauma and being able to, you know, uh, uh, right. Yeah. So, and, and cutting that, they call it the cutting the cord yeah. from that trauma to now. That's right. So, and, and so she was asking me earlier what, about things in my childhood and I'm like, gosh, I'm going to have to think about that. Cause what, 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 what trauma has, have I experienced that's a block for me now that I can cut that I might be able to then use some of your techniques and others to help heal that, you know, what's going on now. So, I, I, you know, I think the Lord is, is one step too much. You don't have to remember what happened in your childhood. It's, it's, okay. about, it's about looking at what's happening today, at, at least for me. That today, okay. what, what are my anxieties? What are my, what are my fears? What are my blocks? And from here, this can be resolved. You know, uh, I would say two-thirds of the time, I, I, I would say that, two-thirds, yeah, a good half of the time, people that link today's behavior to a specific trauma are wrong. As human beings, we love to know why. We're spending so right. much time knowing, wanting to know why, but knowing why <laughs> do not resolve anything. If anything, it creates more resentment. Because we build emotion upon emotion. Yeah, so some, that's true. You know, some people need to know why, and that's fine. That's why there's therapy, and therapy is great. But, right. but uh, at the end of the day, and I, it's from experience, when we create a bridge, this is why I'm here today. This is why I feel this way today. The reason that we find might give us some kind of satisfaction, but that's not going to fix anything. Right. Often it wow. creates more emotions. No, it's it's uh, the way that the brain constructs emotion is like this. If I it, can I can I put a little bit of this uh, how the brain constructs emotion, so, Go for so it, we yes. understand why. It's something yep. that we have to understand is every time we feel an emotion, we know that we feel an emotion today because we're feeling physical sensations in our body. Right. This physical sensation is called interoception. We know that we have an emotion. We know that we feel anxious or resentful or angry or whatever it is because there are physical sensations in our body. That's how we know it. These physical sensations are a prediction from the brain. So I'm going to explain. When, okay. we, when we experience a trauma, it doesn't matter when, from when we are in utero to today. By the way, what is a trauma? A trauma, very simply, a trauma is an instant that hold too much stress, physical or emotional, for us to take on at the moment when we experience it. That's what okay. the trauma is. Too much stress, physical or emotional, for us to take on because of, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, where we are in our life, our personality, uh, our level of fatigue, uh, doesn't matter. If it's too much for us to take on, that's considered as a trauma. Yeah. Right. Uh, and what's happening during a traumatic event? During a traumatic event, there is a moment of dissociation happening. That means that the cognitive brain shut down. When it's too much stress, it's shut down so we don't suffer too much during this instant of trauma. Um, uh, what you and I, we are aware of right now, consciously, uh, is about 2,000 bits of information per second that we process at a, bit of a, at a speed of about 100 to 150 miles per hour. That's consciously. Okay. Subconsciously, our brain has the power to process 400 billion bits of information per second versus Oof. 2,000 and to process it at a speed of 150,000 miles per hour. Wow. That means that when we, uh, when we experience an instant of trauma, what is happening when there is dissociation, the cognitive is not here to filter information. It's out. The subconscious okay. takes over just like the black box of a plane and is going to gather tons, tons of information, sensorial information, what you smell, what you feel, what you taste, everything that is available through your senses because there is no more cognition. It's, okay. going, to, it's going to gather all these elements at a speed of 150 miles per hour with a definition of 400 billion bits per, per second during this time of dissociation. It's a bit like a huge vortex taking a bunch of information in a nonlinear in a nonlinear way. Your brain okay. is also going to uh, record what physical sensations you feel at that instant. Hmm? 
So that happens every time there is an incident of trauma in our life. Now, one of the main jobs of our brain is to predict. Our brain constantly predicts based on past situations. That's what keeps us ahead of, of the game, constantly. It's okay. an amazing machine uh, at prediction, prediction machine. What is an emotional difficulty, a debilitating uh, emotional pattern? What's happening is when your body, your brain, your whole body, finds itself in a situation, when it recognizes one or several elements that were present during a past trauma, your brain can be a smell, it can be a situation, doesn't matter, things don't make any sense. When your brain finds itself in a situation where you recognize in a nonsensical way one or several elements present in a trauma, it is going to predict instantly the physical sensation that you're about to feel in your body based on what mm. was felt during this very specific trauma. We know that neurobiologically. That's fact. That's science. The brain right. is predicting the physical sensations. It's going to generate the physical sensations. That's called interoception. And that's when you know that you're having an emotion. So think about that for a second. Every time you're feeling an emotion, in your body are the same sensations that were felt during a specific trauma in your life. It's only a prediction. Okay. It's like an amazing wow. time machine. So knowing where this prediction comes from doesn't matter because the path is happening every time you feel an emotion. Right. Okay. So that would kind of be, you know, to back up a second, um, kind of reminds me, and I could be off base a little bit, but hypnosis. So is that why you think that people can remember certain things under hypnosis because they've taken in all of this stuff, they just don't remember it? Uh, but it under hypnosis, they could be guided to find it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, and sometimes okay. hypnosis, such uh, hypnosis, and uh, I would say, you know, work with psychedelics, mushroom, okay. ayahuasca, all this is, is very much trending these days. Uh, same thing, yeah. but uh, I would say that the memory reached with hypnosis or any of those treatments might not be accurate. The image might not be accurate because right. there's your whole history since then that accumulated all your belief and and uh, it shifts everything with mres we're not going to tap into any imagery we're only going to use the physical sensations in the body okay when, so you've set up with like what you're saying with hypnosis you've already already set up kind of like a movie in your brain you know of what it what you think it is and that might not necessarily be what it is correct if i understand That's okay correct. cool however the path of the sensations this is correct because right. we cannot uh, we cannot impact it. it it happens it happens to us there's no voluntary uh, power over it there's no control Interesting. okay wow that's that's kind of huge so how have you um what kind of i guess things have you helped people with i guess if that's really even a right question <laughs> no it is you know. it is a right question um you know it, it the the scale is huge it goes from anxiety to phobia to uh unprocessed grief uh performance anxieties resentment um yeah it's 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 a uh, any emotion that keeps on coming back in our life and that yeah. are not purely congruent with our current reality this can be resolved because all it is in a very uh, clean, clear way, these emotions that keeps on coming back are outdated predictions from the brain. Okay. So what we do with MRES is update this prediction, showing that whatever stimulus currently is bringing up this emotion, we're showing the brain that currently the stimulus hold no danger. Okay. And that's all we do in a session. You know, in a session, we we uh, wow. we find ways to re-trigger emotion very specifically, anxiety, fear, etc. We we have a whole battery of of uh, ways to do that in a very respectful and gentle way. Sure. The body generate those physical prediction, this physical sensation, this this uh, interoceptive prediction, and then what's happening most of the time when we feel an emotion, um, anger or whatever it is, as human beings, when we feel that in our life today as adults, we control it. Either way, we scream, or we keep it inside, or we have a beer, or we control the way that we feel one way or another. And that's the problem. 
The problem is we always interfere with the prediction. We never let the prediction plays out until the end without any type of control. Mm, okay. If we want to resolve a disruptive emotional pattern, it is actually quite simple. We have, I mean, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy because we have to let these physical sensations play out without any type right. of control in a safe in environment. Okay. Because at the end of the prediction, the prediction never takes longer than 90 seconds, by the way, nine zero, never. Wow. But if we can let the prediction plays out, the sensation that might be a little uncomfortable, but the only sensations they are not going to kill us. If we let the prediction plays out until the end, at the end of the prediction, the brain, the brain is anticipating being hit by some kind of danger. Right. At the end of the prediction, nothing happens. We're safe and sound. From that very second, the prediction is updated. So that's kind of what you were, I think you were saying, rewiring it, you know, that's rewiring that, that uh, emotion. It's brain plasticity. So, you know, yeah. Okay. Wow. That sounds really intriguing. Um, okay. Have you yourself had like when you were when you were learning about this that you 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 yourself experienced that um, rewire? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, uh, emotionally, I'm not the same. I, I couldn't do this job if I was the same as, as I was. Uh, emotionally, yeah. I'm the same guy. <laughs> I'm probably no better, no worse. But I suffer way less. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, more, uh, I'm more attentive to the people I love. Uh, I uh, stop, no, maybe not completely, but I stop doing things I don't want to do. Huh? Yeah. And I used to be, to be a, yes, a yes man, like yes, and then feeling resentful and feeling, feeling overbooked. I know I don't do that anymore. So in a, in a way, I am much, joy, much more joyful, more, much more content than yeah. what I used to be. And you know, the beauty is I don't have to control it, right? I don't have to do any exercises or meditation. Or, I'm not walking on water, far from there. Trust me, you right, can ask right. my wife. Okay, I got plenty of shit I got, I got to do with. <laughs> but, don't we all? Yeah, but uh, but uh, for my inner peace, it's, for my inner state, it's, it's definitely then night, yeah. I mean, that's so much, so important. You know, I mean, the outwardly, yeah, that's important, but the the inner yeah you know if you can quiet that down substantially or make it shut up completely then uh, that's a huge uh lift and i know some of the parents that i've talked to and some of my friends that you know well i've become friends with people mm -hmm. um that have gone through estrangement or are going through estrangement that's one of the biggest things yeah you know just the the self-talk and the how terrible person you are and and all of that and so many of those emotions obviously some of them we know where they started from but you know with the estrangement but some of them could be well beyond that yep. you know so i think in neuroscience they call that uh, a mind fuck <laughs> <laughs> i like it the technical term yep <laughs> but so yeah absolutely definitely and it's, it's it's endless and you know what you mentioned here the the uh, i think you mentioned guilt you know the guilt the why all this this is poison this is poison it is. It, it doesn't doesn't bring anything to anyone and it, no. it's it's uh it 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 us inside uh i would say that for my practice practice i would say shame guilt resentment these are these are the some of the main poison, right? It, it kills us. Yeah. It, 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 it prevents us to 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 be fully alive, to to live yeah. on. Yeah. Well, to, yeah. With any emotion, yeah. you know, with any bad emotion, I guess you'd say that, or if you want to call it, classify it as bad, but those things, yeah. guilt and shame, and you know, whatever. But those are. Uh, those are killers, yeah. quite literally sometimes. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> quite literally, absolutely. You know, so often I see people who have been, uh, um, for example, abused sexually, and often also from people from their own family, you know? It, right. it's, uh, it's not uncommon, um, sadly. And, and uh, so they have all these emotions that they've been carrying on about that. And then the one that stay and that hurt most is, I cannot forgive. And they right. and they hurt they they um, they're mad at themselves because they can't forgive the person that that ab abused them, 
And uh, and right. often tell them, you don't have to forgive. You don't have to forgive. Why would you hurt yourself because you can't forgive? No, you, you have to live on. You don't have to move on. Right. You don't have to feel bad because you can't forgive. Some things cannot be forgiven, and that's okay. And that's okay. As long as, as you don't carry the weight of the weight of 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 the of the trauma in you constantly. Yeah, I mean, everybody handles all of those kinds of things differently. Mm-hmm. You know, um, some people are able to, you know, forgive, even if they don't say, Hey, you that did this to me, I forgive you. More about you forgiving them in here. That's right. You know, and releasing it. That's right. Um, so you don't have to constantly live with it. That's right. So wow. Okay. Um okay. So tell us about the the institute, the emotional health institute. How did how did that come to be? Well um we needed to have um, a structure to we, we developed this work called called MRES, emotional resolution. And we're having great results. It's a body of work, you know uh, basically, we develop as many entrance doors as we can to to resolve the wounds of trauma, to resolve the debilitating emotional pattern, uh, and and we need a structure to communicate about it and share it and uh, and do some work in in the school district, for example, and and other uh, other places mm-hmm. like this. And so it came, uh, it became pretty naturally to create a nonprofit. So we uh, created a nonprofit here in the USA. Uh, we created a nonprofit in France uh, as well. And uh, Japan, uh, Japan as well. So um, the the institute is here to teach the work emotional resolution to uh, therapists, coaches, parents, teachers, and and of course um, to offer a directory of people who took this work, so people can uh, schedule sessions if they want to, uh, and uh, share information about how the brain constructs emotion, why MRS works, and how it works. A, a big a big part of the work for us is to demystifying emotions you know there's this right. this, this mystic thing about emotions and 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 uh, how complex it is and, and and all this yes it's complex and it's not uh, um, right so it's trying to be yeah to vulgarize what emotions are in order to make them approachable to everybody okay yeah. And you, you mentioned that, um, I think you just mentioned that um, in the local school area that you um, uh, were talking about it, yep. was that well received within the, within the school system? Yeah, we did that before the COVID actually. We uh, taught over 200 teachers here uh, in Marin County, I live in the Bay Area by San Francisco. We taught okay. over 200 teachers. It was very well received, um, especially for the teacher to do on themselves. And of course, we right. taught the teacher how to do it in uh, in the classroom. Now, what we what we found is, f- for the teacher to do it with children, they have to do it. Teacher have to do it when they notice that children are having small emotions, right? Like anxiety is feeling shy. Uh, what we notice is the teacher were only applying MRS when the child's behavior was disturbing them or the classroom. No. And, gotcha. and uh, we cannot blame them, right? They have 25 kids to, to, to deal with. Uh, no blaming here. Right. But that's too late. When the child is reaching a moment of tantrum, you cannot reach him. It's, it's too much because the tantrum is more often than not an accumulation of emotions. Sure. So we, um, we really uh, made a point to, to really try to teach the teachers, don't wait for them to be over the top. It's too long. It takes 45 minutes for the hormones to come down and, and to be able to reach them again. No, it's like noticing when the child is, 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 is having a anxiety, fear, and do it right then. That's when it works. Uh, but right. uh, but um, it's a bit like with our own kids. You know, often we, uh, we feel like we, uh, we, we care for them. But very often as parents, we are trying to help our children because their behaviors or their emotions are causing us pain. That's true. And so we are, we are taking care of them, yes, but through them, we're actually taking care of our own pain. And that's the same thing right. in school, right? They were only doing it when the child behavior was triggering them and they couldn't do their work or they were, t- and it's too late. Because yeah. we, we shift from taking care of to control. And at that point, you might as well let it play out and let him naturally get to the end of it. And then that's correct. You know, 
And, and, and while, uh, the they, while they, they, they're going through their emotions, take care of your emotion. Like go right. and feel what's going on inside of you so you can be actually attentive and present for the child. Awesome. So you mentioned the practitioners. Roughly how many do you have in your directory that do this? And, and like, is there a, like a, a, a more in one area than another as far as geographically goes? So for the U.S., I think uh, currently we have 40 people certified. Our certification has to be renewed every year. It's, uh, it's pretty, uh, I mean, how can I say, it's, it's pretty strict in the way that we, uh, we maintain certification. So we have only 40 certified, we have more practitioners, but certified practitioners, uh, 40 currently. Um, okay. it's, most of them work online. For example, I haven't seen anybody since COVID. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. in person, that is. I only work on Zoom. Um, right. So all of them are accessible um, all the time via Zoom. We have some practitioners in Australia, so the US, Australia, France, Spain, Canada, uh, the Philippines, Japan. Yeah. I mean, if there's anything good, good yeah. that came out of the pandemic, it's things like that because you you can have more access to people, you know, um, you and therapists and even doctors yeah. to a point, you know. So, so that's that's good, cool, absolutely. Um, okay, and then so I, I know we've taught. So it's it's called. MS. Uh, emotional resolution. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have, having trouble remembering the acronym. So, um, well, it sure sounds like it can help with so many things um, and that you're able to really live again if, if you're able to resolve, I guess would be the correct term, mm -hmm. um, some of these things. Yes, and, and you know, uh, Donald, often people ask me, well, if you resolve all your emotions, you're going to be like a robot. It's not about that. Uh, it, right. it's, it's, about, it's, about resolving, it's about resolving the emotions that are not congruent, again, with what we, we're experiencing now, right? And, and we, we notice that a lot of the emotions that we, we undergo actually steal our current experience. Like, for example, right now, I'm having a very nice conversation with you. I enjoy it. Right. But three years ago, for example, I would have been stressed out. And so I would not have enjoyed uh, this conversation with you. I would not have enjoyed this moment for no particular right. reason. Just because I had a fear to be on camera, had a fear to be exposed. But that wasn't congruent. Yeah. You don't want to hurt me. There's, no, there's nothing. I'm here because of my own will. That wasn't congruent. That's gone. I don't have that anymore. But 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 does that mean that I don't feel any emotion? No, to the contrary. That means that anything in my current you feel more yes, probably. Right. Yes, that's exactly it. Because we are actually able to feel the less stuff we carry from the past, the more we can feel of what's happening now. With our family, with our work, with it's it, it's it's uh it's crisper, it doesn't stick. It doesn't right. stick. Um okay, so what um what is the biggest takeaway, I guess, you'd want people to know from our conversation today if you had to pick one thing? Yeah. Uh, I would say um, it doesn't matter if you know or not what caused your current pain. It doesn't matter if the current pain that you're feeling has been with you for decades or years. It doesn't matter. The way that the brain constructs emotion is always the same. And the way right. that the brain can update outdated or obsolete prediction is always the same. So it doesn't matter if you, if you know why you feel a certain way. It doesn't matter if it's with you for years. And if there is a very good reason for, for this pain to be, it doesn't matter. Hmm. If it, can, it can be resolved if it keeps on haunting you. You know, I often tell my, my clients, we're a bunch of haunted houses. You, me, we're full of ghosts. And, yeah. and those ghosts, again, they, they, they don't belong now. They, they belong to the past. And, and um, they can go back to the past. So we can, it's about integrating experiences. These emotions that keep on coming back, all it is are emo or, or situation that were not able to be integrated because it was too much at the time. But nowadays, 
from our perspective today, we can integrate them. It's about reclaiming each part of our life that was stolen by, by some kind of trauma. Right. Awesome. Now, you mentioned also earlier that, you know, there's many different types of people who, who do this kind of work, who, you know, you're 40 ish people here in the US and, and others. Do you have to have any sort of uh, background in psychology or any kind of any kind of license, not license, but any kind of um, training? I mean, before your training no no no. and really the the that that's that's the thing about about our work it it wasn't created by therapists uh it was created by uh, people who come from different uh, physical therapists uh uh, gastroenterologist uh uh, me Mm -hmm. i come from the kitchen uh uh, you know people who come from different different uh background who, who studied that for a long time but our approach is such that we want to be able to communicate this work to absolutely everybody who want to use it in a safe way. So if, right. if, if people want to be certified, they will be certified and they will learn how to use this work uh, safety, safely and, and with uh, great respect. Uh, but you don't have to have any background. You don't have to have any okay. diploma. Or no, 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 no. It's, it's irrelevant. Have you gotten very much like pushback from any like like those professionals have you have you heard anything that people say oh my gosh you can't do this it's crazy no 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 because uh, because we have therapists working with us as well you know we have therapists working with us uh um, we have some studies coming out uh about about the 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 impact of the work and we need more uh so uh, the more the better of course but no of course we are we're doing that very uh very uh, consciously and very uh, very safety and and therapists that take the training it's i mean it's not easy for a therapist to take our training because in in many ways um in many ways we we, we can show that that people don't have to talk for a long time about their problems to resolve it uh, and again right. there's nothing against talking for a while about the pro- problems it's it, therapy it definitely has a place uh, in healing definitely Sure. Uh, uh, but uh, but it's different. It's a different approach. Well, that's awesome, and, and that's unusual, I would think, because a lot of, I guess you'd call it alternatives to to traditional stuff. People get a little freaked out about it, and they you know give the people who are trying to do this um, a hard time. So I'm glad you have some uh, all the different walks of life and all of the different. Uh, people involved because that'll that'll help that and it's just all about helping people that's right you know so um i I don't see where you can go wrong with it but well that it's been very intriguing so um so if people want to um get in touch with you what is the best way so with me personally is uh, cedricbertelli.com that's my website and you can reach me there have a schedule of free consultation or whatever, uh, whatever is, is, is good for the person. And the people can also go to emotionalhealthinstitute.org uh, or emres.com, which is the main, um, the main website. Well, that's it. Uh, the main website okay. for, um, for EHI, for the Emotional Health Institute. We have a lot of information and articles and, and, and such. Okay. All right, cool. And then um, also you mentioned um, if people wanted to partake in the work, you know, to join you on your mission. Yep. Um, so they will find information on both websites and uh, the description of the curriculums will be there. Uh, the cost will be there. Uh, we try to keep the cost as low as we can because it's important, I think, okay. to share the work. Um, so uh, all the information will be there. And if uh, they have any questions, they can always reach out to myself or, or to the EHI. We are prompt to respond usually. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and, and like I said, everyone, I will make sure that the, um, all of, um, Cedric's information, all of the websites we've talked about, all of his contact is in the description below. So check that out and make sure you, um, to reach out to him if you are interested and if you have, whether you want to, uh, work with him personally or one of his other people, or if you want to learn 
to do this yourself um, and help other people. I know, I know um, many of us have a, feel like we have a calling to do certain things and clearly this is, uh, this is yours. <laughs> yeah. So absolutely. Um, absolutely. It's, it, um, it, it is more and more uh, as I see, uh, as I see that the work become more and more simple and, yeah. and the impact that it has uh, on, on, on my clients and people around me. So definitely uh, it might change one day, but so far, so far, right. so far so good in, in, I mean, in yeah. my motivation of doing this work, it's, uh, it's right. Well, having a little more simple uh, life would certainly, certainly be good. Um, one thing I didn't do, uh, we'll show the, uh, the other website that we mentioned uh, here on the screen so people will know. And that's the where you would go to learn, uh, to, learn how to, to become, register. Yep. Right. Okay. To become so a practitioner. All of, yeah. Shows all the information and um just just go there like i said if you are interested in um learning more about doing this yourself um or you can book a consultation you know all of that stuff so testimonials looks like is there so yeah, there's, on both websites uh -huh. there are a bunch of testimonials um awesome yeah, certainly and we're getting more of course with uh, it's, it's, course. it's more it's more that we forget to ask for them than to that you know but yeah these are already like a bunch right. of them, a bunch yeah cool well very good well if um if you guys have gotten uh benefit out of this video please make sure and like the video subscribe to the channel um like i said reach out to cedric if you if you care to um if you'd find like to find out some more him and his team and uh i guess do you have any closing words you'd like to say, Cedric? Or no, thank you, thank you very much for for the opportunity to to share this work with uh, with your audience. Thank you for for your time, Donald. And um, um, yeah, just never believe that something is is forever. And and even mm. if you have been suffering for a long time, you know, give it a try. You might be very surprised. Uh, human sure. beings are not made like any mammals were not made to hold trauma it make us sick mm -hmm. and as you mentioned earlier donald uh, guilt shame all these things the, it's, it doesn't mean anything but uh, but but pain and uh, yeah. it reduce our cognitive abilities our way to relate to people our self-worth so um, it's useless to carry perfect well, on that note, we will um, we will end for today. So we'll see you guys on the next one. And like I said, just make sure and reach out to uh, Cedric or myself if you need any more information. We'll see you on the next Thank one. Thank you very much. You bet.